So let's go over today's agenda. Um, we'll do a quick recap of last week because I see new faces who weren't here um, last week. Um, we'll go over what, did you, what do you currently know about your client, looking at it from a almost like a potential customer's perspective. Um, what does your position entail? I know a lot of people have been asking about what is a brand scientist, what does a content creator specifically do, and then how do you apply this to your client? Um, learning about your client, one of the most important aspects here. And then our game plan for the week, because we're trying to make some moves this week, and it's going to be on you guys being really tight-knit with your team to get these done in time for your meeting with your client. So it'll feel like it's fast-paced, um, but it'll all work out as long as you guys over-communicate and you're diligent with your client. Things are pretty crazy right now. Times are changing. We are living in a digital economy. Um, we like to use at Marcom the hashtag shift happens because it really does. Um, you can't go about the same traditional means as you used to when advertising for a business or even getting your name out there. Um, so one thing that is pretty much changing is that knowledge and attention are currency. Money is going where the attention is flowing. Uh, prime example, Super Bowl yesterday. They put so much money into those commercials that I'm sure a majority of you were probably just looking at your cell phone while those commercials were on, right? Um, so had those companies made that shift, all right, I'm going to blow up Facebook right now, put $2,000 into this ad that's going to reach a couple thousand people. Well, that might have been more effective than a commercial that you turned down because the game's not on. Um, so we're learning right now that most organizations have to become media companies first. You have to have some type of uh, logo that sticks out or some colors that stick out. I think of Supreme when it comes to those types of things. Not really out there with their font, but it's just standard, just red, you know? Um, and that uh, awareness and reach are key metrics for conversion uh, because of engagement. If you guys were here last week, you saw some of the examples that I put on of, let's say, Wendy's. Wendy's right now is notorious for roasting people on Twitter, having uh, witty responses and knowing how to play um, the odds in their favor just based on what's said to them. Because like you guys will learn to do, when someone comments on one of your posts, it's going to be like an oh shit type moment because you're going to be like, what do I say? What do, what do I think the client would say right now? And then you're going to be texting your teammates, oh my God, someone commented on our thing that we just worked on for a long time. What do we say? And it's going to feel like almost like a rush and it's kind of funny because it's just Instagram. Um, but you'll learn that the overall goal of this is to make engagement. You want people to feel something for your client and the art that you're creating. Um, so like I was saying, in this ever-changing digital economy, there are winners who are adapting to the times and there are losers. Um, so I love this example right here on the left. It's on the app Waze. Do you guys use Waze? So this lets you know, say, when you're driving down the freeway, if there's an accident, um, popos, you know, just hanging out there, people will comment, let you know those types of things. But this isn't an over ad here. They let you know, okay, there's a caramel macchiato coming up. Do I want that? Mm, probably yes. Take me there. As opposed to the right, where we're looking at this old school um, billboard that has hella words on it. You probably won't even read it all. And if you do read it all, you don't even know what to do with that. It says turn left, turn right, turn left, hit this exit. No, I'm not doing that. I have places to go, things to do. Um, so it's really thinking about how to make it easier for your customers by make it super simple and definitely not by traditional means. So like I was saying, winners right now are capitalizing on the white spaces to differentiate. Set yourself apart from the competition, um, but do it classy and don't necessarily overdo it unless that's your brand voice. If your brand is all about overdoing it, who I don't think any of our clients right here are, um, then you can do that. But you all probably shouldn't. Okay, this is a super important one. Um, you all have learned that, uh, especially in your classes, it's much easier to utilize your resources together. Um, no need to pass notes around. You can just send a Google Doc to one another. Send messages instead of creating a PowerPoint and emailing it and trying to figure out what the difference is. 
open up Google Sheets, boom, super easy. You mess it up like it was funny with us. This presentation earlier had some really weird error on it. Like emojis were popping up, like there was large font across my screen. Everything was freezing on my cell phone, on my laptop, on Manny's laptop. Um, but because it's 2018, I was able to go back like three versions of the file and bada bing, bada boom, we were good. Um, but that's because I knew how to do that. Had, let's say, my dad, who's 55 years old, had that happened to him, he would have been like, well, shit, I have to start all over, you know? Yeah, he's like, ugh, I hate these things. Um, but you guys are not like that. You guys have been molded by technology and social media. You were learning to type by the first grade. You were already knowing about uh, the internet and those types of things. So this should come pretty, not necessarily simply to you, but this should be almost like innate. You should be like, oh yes, um, I'm having these issues trying to download this video or for example, uh, the content creators are going to have to upload videos and sometimes when you're working with Google Drive, it has to be processed by YouTube first. But if you're trying to be like super clutch and post something online, well, Google has to take like 30 minutes to process sometimes. So what are you going to do? You are going to airdrop it because that's instantly. Um, and you learn these things through trial and error and <laughs> sometimes it's not clutch when it happens. Um, but as you learn, it will become more clutch and you'll become faster and better at your craft. Digital ecosystem, same set. Everything is connected. Say you are in a Google Drive with one another. You have your people um, who are essentially your culture. You have this technology, your cell phone. If you guys use iPads or things like that, it's connected. You can instantly uh, take your files and put them onto these channels, social media files. Um, and even then you have customers. So all of this is propelling itself just like an ecosystem would. Oh, so yeah, long story short of what I was saying, strive for efficiency. You want to get done, you want things to get done as fast and as precise as possible when you're doing them. Just because when it comes to managing your clients and working on art, sometimes it will feel like you just can't get it right, um, but it'll just take a little tweaking, a little tweaking there. Um, but as you get further throughout the semester, the art will become easier. How you communicate with your client when you're doing a post and you're trying to know exactly what your client would say, it'll just become more innate to you. Um, but it will take practice. And learning how to utilize these things for a client, um, right there, number two, um, will be overall changing the community, helping out these clients who truly need your help. Um, take this experience that you're learning now, you're getting ahead of the game, and then later on, you already have experience. So frankly, you can change the world. You know how to utilize technology. Oh yeah, and that's how you stay winning. Just like uh, this here, hashtag winning on the iPhone X, utilizing technology. Money goes where the attention flows. Right now, attention is increasingly flowing to digital platforms. You'll know how to network with clients. You'll know how to present yourself, utilize this technology. We like to call it like a lightsaber in your pocket, fighting the bad forces, because you know how to do whatever you, you need to do. You have everything you have right here. Apple Pay, like you need to make a clutch slideshow, boom, boom, wherever you're at, you got that. Um, and the most important aspect of this overall thing, um, it's uh, getting to know your client and, and doing it with empathy. Um, there's a disconnect between the Merced community and the UC community that has just been there since the university was created here. And it seems like right now having these clients all over the place who are deeply involved in the Merced community and you guys um, who are willing to help them when they truly need help, this we're hoping to bridge the gap that is separating the two right now. Um, so through beautiful art and your guys' passions, hopefully we can change Merced um, for the better and for the long run. Okay, so what do you know about your clients? And we have a Google form for you guys to fill out. Um, the point of this is to be looking at your client as if you were a potential customer. Um, and how they would be thinking based if they had just heard the name or if they've heard things from other people, 
Um, this will give you insight later on when you're actually trying to like propel your client and get their name out there to be like, okay, well, how the hell do we actually get conversion? How do we get someone over there who's never even, so like, let's say, um, I'm from a small town, so I never had uh, Indian food before coming to Merced. Um, yeah, I just, I had it. it. There was no Indian restaurants. I mean, where was I supposed to go? I just went and got tacos all the time. So uh, when I came, I tried Indian food, and I was like, damn, this is pretty damn good. But I only knew because one of my friends was like, hey, taste of Lil India. You got to go get that naan. You got to go get the chicken masala. Like, that shit's fire. And I was like, but I've never had that. It's okay. You can still put it in the same form of a taco. You just put it in and then eat it. But I didn't know that because I never necessarily heard about it. Well, I heard about it from a friend, but I wasn't looking into that genre. So this is similar. You're putting yourself in the shoes of a potential customer. So let me write this down for you. Okay. So I know a lot of people have been asking, like, what do their positions even do? Um, raise your hand if you... Uh, put in the application that you're interested in researching or looking at data and analytics? Two, three, four. Okay. Um, so that would basically be the brand scientist uh, with your client. The way that I look at it, a uh, brand scientist is looking at everything before. You're looking at all the data, um, any interactions that have happened previously, um, during, as a post is going on, you're monitoring it to see how it's going, making sure no one's leaving anything like, leaving any hate or if they're saying anything awesome. Um, and then after you're looking at this follow-up data, okay, the content creators created this. Um, it looks pretty good, but although we didn't get that much traction, where do we go from here? Um, the brand scientist, I have a whole entire like uh, a guide that I've already created, so I'll be emailing that to you guys tonight. Um, but basically, we're just going to be going over the responsibilities and the products of the two positions right now, just so you guys will know what you're in store for um, for this semester. Um, digital identities, those are basically your persona on, on social or, say, on Google, on Yelp, your email address, those types of things. If, like, just think of yourself, your persona, and then your social persona. You try to create an avatar who best, um, I guess, fits who you are as a person. We'll do the same for these clients, who they are as a client, what's their persona. Um, in the end of this whole entire semester, the products that you will have is you help create the outline for the playbook, which is basically a manual of the content that you will be creating for your clients. You'll be figuring out what type of audiences really uh, um, work with your clients, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, buy from your clients. Um, and so that'll be utilizing a lot of Facebook data. I was showing Manny not too long ago um, the creepy amount of information you can get off Facebook. And it's so easily accessible um, that if you know how to use it and you know how to really work this system for your client, um, then you can make a conversion happen, basically whatever objective you want to happen. Um, and then in the end of the semester, you'll do a report of like what you learned. But we'll make it pretty easy by then to do that. Yeah, and like, oh, sorry. Well, there is a ton of data, but you won't be having to like look at it all. There's key metrics that you want to follow, and you'll learn to like separate um, what you really care about from what you don't care about. Because there's not, there's going to be some information that's not relevant to you, you know. No, no, no. This is the internet, my friend. There are no lines. There, you are not boxed into any boundaries. Uh, be resourceful. Be a detective on the internet. Like, I want you guys to go just deep into it. That's, that's partly the job of it is you get a like breadcrumbs, you follow the trail. Okay, I want to figure out how I can find this spot or how to reach new customers. Um, for example, like uh, who was it on campus? Is it Little Taste of India who would come and they would do the Murito? Yes. The Murito, fire. See, that was my segue from Mexican food to Indian food. They made it so simple for me. Just in a burrito, and then I was good. I was loving that. So when you learn, you'll, I'll teach you guys how to find new audience members. You bridge the gap by finding what your different audiences have in common, and then, boom, highlight that. Think of the Nintendo Wii. Nintendo did a fantastic job of creating a product that everyone loved. Um, the elderly were getting fit on it. Young children were uh, um, 
learning how to use it too. And then even the active community, people who like to exercise, were playing Wii Tennis instead of actually going and playing tennis. So they did a fantastic job of creating new customers um, by targeting them correctly. All right, we'll go on to content creators. So these are the ones who create the media machines for your client. Photos, videos, if you want to create cool GIFs. Okay, working with your team. These are super important. These are major keys right here. If I could put my DJ Khaled GIF, had there not been that error, he would be right there. You guys need to over communicate when it comes to any little thing that you're trying to do to get the job done. Some clients are gonna lag, that happens. Some of your teammates are gonna lag, it definitely happens. Just make sure that you cover all of your bases and as long as you're in the good, you go back, you review your messages, you're like, oh my God, is everything cool? Okay, yes, I've done my part, I've dotted all my I's, I've crossed all my T's, I am good. As long as you're doing that, that's the best that you can do. And so you shouldn't necessarily worry more after that um, because you give and you receive and that's how being on a team works. Um, set realistic deadlines, um, 2X them for clients. I don't know what that means. I don't know who wrote that. Uh, so within your team, set your realistic deadlines, but when you're talking to your client, double the time that you're saying and tell the client that. So you've got that little buffer like internally. A pro tip there. Cool. And then, yeah. The okay, so like, say we're gonna, uh, you know, put out two posts next week, or no, say we're gonna produce two posts by X date uh, in two days, right? We're gonna say internally we're gonna produce them by Wednesday, but we're gonna tell the client we're gonna produce them by Friday. You double that amount of time, right? So then you're not like. If something goes wrong, when something goes wrong, you got a little two-day window to fix it and, and move on. And if everything goes right, you just look like a badass. Yeah. Sorry we got too early. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any questions at all, doesn't matter what time of day, um, you all know the executive board back there? Just raise your hands. Shout out to them. Um, uh, and we'll also be giving you guys uh, our Marcom team information. So that's me, Manny, uh, Mikey, Chris back there. Um, so yeah, feel free to hit us up when, whenever. Like I said, I'll be sending the brand scientist guides for them to look over. And it has it like in step-by-step -step, um, process. So by the end of the semester, if you go through it all, dude, you'll know how to utilize uh, Facebook, Instagram, all the audience networks. Um, so you could even then, if you really tried to go far, get a Facebook certification and then you're a hot commodity. You can get picked up by any business who's really trying to grow digitally. And then that's a screenshot from my phone because these are apps that you guys should be utilizing. Facebook, I know the app's kind of creepy. They ask a lot of information. They ask to listen to your microphone and stuff. Everyone's doing it. I mean... <laughs> At this point, you can't fight it. Um, messenger, really important for having to hit each other up super fast. Um, video chat, um, Facebook ads, brand scientist, that one is gonna be super key for you. You wanna be able to deploy content wherever you're at. Um, if you're like, I like to take the Amtrak home instead of having to drive so I can do work. And I just set up my hotspot on my laptop and I'm good to go. But even if I just have my phone, I can still get work done. Wherever I go, I can get work done. And that's the beauty of being able to utilize this technology. Um, so, by the way, we'll, we'll be sending this presentation out so you guys don't have to be like writing these down. And Hangouts will be important because if you guys are trying to have a meeting and say someone lives on campus and someone lives on one side of Redondo and someone lives on the other side of town, well, damn, super inconvenient in the middle of the night to go meet at someone's house. F that, open up Google Hangouts, their face is right there on your screen. Don't make it harder on yourselves. All right, learning about your client. So um, this is where the next Google form comes in and this is where you guys are gonna be detectives. This is where you're figuring out the nitty gritty of your client. You're gonna be searching Google, you're gonna be looking on Yelp, um, finding what, I don't know, ancient, not ancient newspapers, just old newspapers say about them. Um, this is so, you guys can see what your client is like from a potential customer's perspective. If they have good ratings on Google, 
um, those types of things. You need to know those things. That way you can know what to say and what not to say um, when you're posting content. And so this is kind of the game plan for the rest of the week. I'll just brush over that one, but we'll get back to it. Um, brand scientists, you're the head communicators of your team. You're going to be the one who's going to be talking uh, the closest to your clients. So at some point this week, you're going to have to hit up your client, preferably as soon as possible, because you need to meet with them this week. Hear their story. Um, see what they're trying to do. Why did they even come to the marketing club? How do they need our help? How do they need your guys' help? Um, and then we have an initial client meeting outline that you should read before. We'll email those to you guys. Um, you're going to meet with your client this week. Give them uh, an interview. Ask them some of these questions. And then give them the brand report. Um, I'm sorry, the brand checklist. Because they should know these things. Maybe the reason why they're coming is because they're not the most um, adept in the digital spaces as you guys are. So maybe they don't know that they have really bad Yelp reviews, or maybe they don't know that they have people talking smack on Google reviews, you know? But those are things you should know if you have a business, you know? So when you guys present those things, do it gently, because this is their lives. They're, they're little babies that they've just been nourishing, you know? Um, and then fill out the client intake form, which will be in an email that will just kind of describe how we do that with you guys. Um, okay. So we have five minutes. And so this basically means more donuts and coffee. So round two.